Comcast IRL will be live in Miami with Patrick Bet David, Donald Trump Jr., Matt Gates, and Luke Rudkowski. Join us there. Get your tickets by clicking the link in the description below or by going to TimCast.com. Well, let's jump into the first story. We got big news, ladies and gentlemen, from the Washington Post. Check it out. Matt Gates files motion to oust Kevin McCarthy as House Speaker. Rep. Matt Gates introduced a resolution Monday evening to remove Kevin McCarthy from his seat, triggering an expected intra-party clash and setting up a showdown for the House to decide whether to, to depose McCarthy likely within 48 hours. Gates and a handful of hard right Republicans have repeatedly threatened to go after McCarthy's speakership if he relied on Democratic votes to pass any spending legislation, which happened Saturday after McCarthy could not get a majority of Republicans to support various proposals to fund the government with only GOP votes. Using a motion to vacate, a single person can force the House to consider removing the speaker. McCarthy agreed to lowering the threshold to bringing the motion to win over enough support to become speaker in January. This one's going to be really interesting. McCarthy's basically a Democrat at this point. If he's now teaming up with Democrats for his spending bills and working against Republicans, the question, though, is will Democrats now, seeing an opportunity, team up with Matt Gates to remove Kevin McCarthy? Do you guys see what's going on Twitter right now? Um, uh, Kevin McCarthy just tweeted, quote, bringing on, bring it, bring it on. <laughs> Matt Gates retweeted him just a couple min- minutes ago and said, just did. So <laughs> the drama is unfolding on Twitter in real time as this video is happening right now. And, and it's very interesting to see what Matt Gates is doing here, because I, I, I think, you know, the long term strategy for Matt here is to probably become the next governor of this very beautiful, amazing state after Ron DeSantis leaves office in a few years. And if he's going to leave in in, in a fury of fireworks and just public outrages and storms, this is the way to do it. This is the way to, to get your name out there. And in our current kind of political uh, sphere where outrage sells and controversy really is the lead, this is the way to get everyone's attention. And I think he's doing a, a good job at it. As of course, this is an important issue. He's making an important stand, even though it is Republicans fighting each other, which they usually do anyway. I mean, we all knew this was going to happen, right? It took McCarthy, what, 15 votes to get the speakership in the first place. So like it was all leading to this at some point. I think most of us and probably most your viewers are with uh, with uh, Gates in spirit, of course, like enough of the nonsense spending enough of giving all the money away to Ukraine and everything else. Like we take care of our border. Uh, but I hate to tell Matt Gates, even if this is just because he wants to be governor, the House always wins. So that's how this operates in Washington, right? Like McCarthy will stick around most likely. And even if he doesn't, it's not going to be Gates as Speaker of the House. And the machine just finds a way. You got to give the devil his due. We may not like it. I certainly don't like it. I don't think any of you guys like it, but it finds a way. That's why we always get into these shutdowns. Frankly, I would be for the government shutting down right now and not coming back for a couple of years. That would be fine with me, but that's not what's going to happen, right? They extend it for 45 days and 45 days from now, we'll all be pissed about something else yep. and something else will happen. But don't worry, Zelensky will get his cash. Yep, and the Republicans will bend over and and bend the knee and take whatever globalist policy that they tell them to take, and they'll implement it without even uh, any kind of doubt. Kevin McCarthy has been a lot different in his kind of reign ever since Tucker Carlson left Fox News. And I I think, really, there's something to to note here when it came to Tucker Carlson and Fox News calling him out. That that, that whole entire uh, pressure on him is totally gone. And since then, we have seen a a totally different Kevin McCarthy that really has been uh, not in favor. Of, of, of the people and ruling in a way that hasn't been benefiting anyone isn't but there the ruling elites. Isn't there something super weird happening here? Because Trump backed McCarthy. Gates is a Trump guy. I saw the base guys going after uh, Gates today because Trump is not ha- because Trump backed McCarthy. So it really creates some really strange bedfellows. Like it does. The arrows start going in some really weird ways. And then did you see Trump today after uh, after the hearing that he did in, uh, where was that? That was in New York, right? After the hearing, he basically was like, well, I'm not going to go after McCarthy because he says nice things about me, which is, yeah. that's what everyone hates about Trump. But I get it. I get it. Right. He can say anything. I, I think they'll always love him. Matt, uh, this, this, this was during the fight for the speakership in the House. Trump was for McCarthy and Matt said no. And Matt said he didn't care. I think this shows Matt's principled. I, I, I have tremendous respect for the work that he's doing. It's about time somebody did it. But uh, to be completely honest, I'll just I'll, I'll soften a bit of what you said, Dave. You're right. I mean, the machine finds a way. You've yeah. got all these snakes and, and, and Matt's trying his best. I posted a picture of Sisyphus when he said, I'm trying to change D.C. Mm-hmm. And I'm not. And, you know, people got mad. They were like, what's, what's the alternative? I'm like, I'm not saying he shouldn't do it. I'm glad he's doing it. But he's pushing a boulder uphill, and it is a long way uphill. 
I'm glad. I'm glad he's doing what he's doing. He's one of the most effective, one of the best politicians we have, if you can even say a politician is good. But he's pushing a boulder up. Hill. Well, philosophically, what would you say? I mean, I think if McCarthy was sitting here, he would say, hey, there's this giant swamp. There's this giant system. I mean, I've interviewed him and talked about this. I think he would say you can maybe get some incremental things like the machine is so the swamp and the deep state. It's so there's so much there and they can almost never get anything done. Right. Like the Democrats are just pure evil and the Republicans are kind of just a little less evil. So I think McCarthy's argument would be. <laughs> In essence, it would be, hey, maybe we can do a little something, spend a little bit less or get a little money moved to the border or something. And he I think that's really what he's saying right now. That would be a win where basically what you're saying is Gates is just trying. He's throwing the Hail Mary, knowing there is no flying F chance that it's going to work. But it, it is good if you're or actually auditioning for another job. Exactly. I don't say, by the way, I don't think it's not necessarily just governor. I think he may just want a, a spot on network TV. I don't think he wants you to know. be governor. I, I would imagine that he probably if, if this if there was further future ambitions, Senate makes more sense. Governor brings him to the state where he's, he's in D.C. right now. Right. So that's a that's a shift. I don't you, you wouldn't want to take. Right. Uh, well, if he likes being in Florida, I mean, he is a Florida guy. Like if he likes being in Florida. Why not come home to Florida? I mean, D.C. is an absolute disgusting cesspool of scum. But and I, 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 I wouldn't. I wouldn't immediately say it's just about uh, a, a job prospect. They're trying to remove him. Mm -hmm. They're threatening to expel Matt Gates for what he's doing. I, I wonder if this is why Thomas Massey tweeted out. This is like yesterday. Um, he, I fear this is the quote tweet from Thomas Massey. I fear the attempted uh, attempting to vacate Speaker McCarthy at this juncture is a bad idea that will lead to worse outcomes for conservatives. Signed, the only still serving co-author and co-sponsor of the motion to vacate Speaker Boehner. So he he went mm. through this before. And apparently, thinks yeah, but it's not he, because maybe he back he, McCarthy anyway. Uh, Thomas Massey? Yeah. I don't know. Pretty sure he did. But well, he's, well yeah. I think they did at the end, but they did him and Chip Roy ended up getting a bunch of concessions that right. I think now Gates is saying, well, you guys aren't actually getting the concessions at him. But Massey, to me, Massey is the most libertarian, anti-government guy we have in government. Maybe, you know, Rand Paul's right there too, but in the House. And it's like, if, if that's what he's saying, there's probably, he knows something behind the scenes. I wonder if it's he's afraid of what's happening to Gates, that they're going to now turn on Gates. And he's like, oh, we don't need inter-party conflict right now because the Democratic Party is trouncing in us. Intra party. You, you, <laughs> Intra party. No. Yeah. Right. You don't need Gates getting any friendlier with AOC, which every now and again, they kind of dig each other. Hey, I, I like but, it. But I, I'll appreciate, I mean, they were trying to stop insider trading in Congress. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah. We take our wins where we can. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I, what? They, they, Kevin McCarthy has a backroom deal to get funding for Ukraine? I'm, I, 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 I cannot believe that if you, I, I'd be willing to bet if you went and just talked to random people on the street, should we spend money on Ukraine? They're going to say no. Mostly. A yeah. lot of people probably say yes, you know, of course. And depending on which city you go to, they're going to have flags everywhere. They'll say yes. But I think a genuine random sampling of a million people in this country find 70, 80, 90 percent saying no. Why would we do that? But of course, Congress will do it. Why? Because Congress is not beholden to the American people. They're beholden to lobbyists. Hey, as Mitch McConnell said, the number one job of the Republican Party is to fund the Ukraine war, the war that we're also not in. At some point, do you think if you're giving hundreds of billions of dollars to fund a war, you're in a war? Yeah. Would that be a technical way you'd say you're in a yes, war? Yes, I, I, mean, I, I agree. Know, no, you know, like no. eventually if you're funding everything and also, by the way, pushing the guy with nukes a little closer to World War Three. I mean, that which really is what they're doing, right? Like at the end of the day, you could say Russia's losing and losing and losing, which they're not, by the way. But you could say that. And at the end of the day. When the guy, when the shit is about to hit the fan, he has nukes. So who really is winning? And, he's, and we're talking about his doorstep. Yeah. So it's just, they've not given any legitimate reason to us as to why we're involved in Ukraine. They've not even tried to. Now, Kevin McCarthy goes and makes a backroom deal with Democrats, ignoring the Republicans, who he's supposed to be working with, to get funding for Ukraine. Wasn't it, uh, am I wrong about this? They, they, they put together a clean bill, but it didn't have Ukraine spending in it. And they're like, yeah. no, Democrats were like, we refuse. I mean, the it's fact amazing. that the Democrats have become so clearly the war party is just yeah. such a perfect example of when I say that the machine always stays ahead, that's how it always stays ahead because somehow the parties flip in front of your eyes. The liberals become conservatives and the conservatives become liberals. The machine figures out a way to just exist think, and continue. Do you think the people are... Voting because they're afraid of Putin or because they're just bought? 
Oh, you mean our congressmen? I yeah. don't think our congressmen are afraid of Putin. Like maybe Putin's got some dish on who's like banging who and who's doing coke and hookers <laughs> and all that stuff. But I, I, I think it's they, they figure one way or another, they get these people basically to betray the United States. And then we just, you also have to remember, guys, like we have such a nation of people who are not paying attention in any way whatsoever because they're addicted to pills or porn or whatever, or just distracted or don't care, or they're scrolling this thing all day or playing video games all day, that it's just easy to just keep the machine in operation. It's actually not that difficult. We can all talk about it, but it's not that difficult to keep a bunch of people stupid. But I, but I do think we are seeing a generational shift. A lot of it has to do with Ron Paul. That's how you end up with people like Matt Gates, mm -hmm. because where Ron Paul was, Dr. No, he's in Congress. He's saying, no, 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 why are we doing this? Very few people cared. Then he runs 2008, creates a movement on the internet. A lot of young people grew up understanding and hearing what he had to say. And a lot of these young people shouldn't have heard it at all if the machine had its way. So I do think there's a strong possibility, be, and, and the culture war is a component of this, what the quote unquote right is in the culture war is basically people who are inspired by the ideas of freedom, liberty, individuality, et cetera. And now you're looking at a deep state, a bureaucratic state desperate to stop a freedom movement of some sort. Yeah. It, it's, well, varying yeah. degrees. it's pretty clear the people aren't being represented in, in Congress. The people are disenfranchised. People are pissed off. The price of everything is going up. And these politicians are getting richer and richer every single year that they're in public office when they're supposed to be taking polit uh, political uh, salaries. And then but but they're 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 millionaires somehow. How, how did that happen? Because they're selling you out. They're selling your country out. And you were right, Tim, especially about Ron Paul. He started, of course, the original Tea Party. The original Tea Party was hijacked. But the original Tea Party sowed the seeds for Occupy Wall Street. Occupy Wall Street brought a lot of people together. Then, of course, it was also co-opted. But after Occupy Wall Street, we saw a huge shift, especially in the media narratives, especially in the divide and conquer uh, kind of arena. And, and now we're really reaching a point where people are like, I'm sick of politics. I hate politicians. None of these people represent me. The Republicans are just as bad as the Democrats. The Democrats are just as bad as the Republicans. It's a uniparty screwing you over. And I think a lot of people are realizing it. And that's why Kevin McCarthy, I think, is more popular than ever. And uh, Kevin McCarthy as, or Matt Gates? Sorry, excuse me. Matt Gates is, is more popular than ever. Excuse me. <laughs> they both are, to be honest. I, I apologize for that. But but uh, I got the tweets pulled up here, and that's why I'm mixing words here. But Matt Gates is more popular than ever for a reason. And, and there's a reason we reacted to this news the way we did because it, it, it does kind of represent a sentiment of people just being disenfranchised and pissed off. I, I think one other thing related to Gates, putting aside governor or whether he wants a TV host, someone is going to have to be the heir apparent to MAGA at some point, yeah. right? Yep. Whether it's because of indictments or Trump literally falls down the stairs or or just goes out into the or sunset up, like or, or falls up the stairs, <laughs> right? Exactly. But whatever whatever that thing is, when, when Trump is no longer involved in this whole thing, someone has to take that thing. And it seems like Gates is basically saying, hey, I'll be the guy to do that. Again, it's kind of weird because Trump backed McCarthy and refuses to say anything yes. bad about him. And then the Trump people were going after Gates today. And that that's but what also makes politics so infuriating. Right. But Trump's just the avatar of the anger. He's captured. Right. So somebody's had. So take the anger. So when Trump take the thing. backs Fauci, when Trump backs McCarthy, there's a lot of people who are like, I still think Trump's the best bet. But it means that that it is not about Trump. This is, the, this, is the, this is the thing that people didn't realize, I should say Democrats didn't realize 2016 on. They kept saying Trump is doing this, Trump is causing this division. They're like, no, 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 no. Trump is not the cause of, he is a symptom of. The people in this country are angry. And like Michael, what was it Michael Moore? Yeah. He said, Donald Trump is the human Molotov cocktail that they're going to launch into the system and it'll feel good. If you stop there, his statement was fantastic. Coming then, from a human keg, uh, you know. Uh, but he, he then goes on to say, for a few days, or a few weeks, but then they'll realize, and they didn't realize. No, he was wrong. The people chose Donald Trump because he was just an avatar representing their anger. That means as time goes on, it may not be Donald Trump. It could, it could be a lot of different people, so long as you're true to what the point is. And the point is, yo, we want accountability in government. Well, there was Make America Great was really, because you're talking about there's angry MAGA and then there's like functional MAGA. And like, I'm afraid that the, if it's the anger that got him elected, that we'll see another anger representative in the future, maybe not even from MAGA and that things could get really bad. Well, look, you can kill a man, but you can't kill an idea, right? Very for vendetta. And that's the idea. And I think I think Gates kind of sees that, that this the Trump thing will not exist forever. How old is Trump? He's 79, 78? 78. 78, right? He's no spring chicken again. So regardless of where this ends out, whether he's president again or anything, the man will not exist forever. So Gates is seeing the writing on the wall. I mean, Gates, 
I like him a lot too, but like he is a politician, so he's in the system too. He's tr he's not in it as a politician right now to not be a politician after, yeah. right? He's in the politician to figure out what his next steps are. And if he sees, wow, there's a movement that the leader's kind of getting old and someone's got to take over, like he's kind of doing what's right for him. I, I'm not even begrudging him that. I think it's just worth noting. Yeah. Victor Hugo once said, nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And I think we're in that particular time where there are multiple political paradigm shifts that are absolutely huge that we're living through right now. It's very exciting, but also it's also very dangerous at the time because as Ian mentioned, it could go either way. Yeah, you could. we got to focus the MAGA laser on something creative like graphene, like reindustrialization <laughs> of the United States. Everyone, everyone drink, but take a shot. Because if, if we don't focus the MAGA laser, the Chinese Communist Party will focus it or the World Economic Forum will focus it and get people to fight each other. And I feel like that's what's been happening for five years is that it, peace, people are obviously, the world is attempting to manipulate our government and our people, and they are. And I, I think it's more so, you know, you have that meme where it's, uh, they're trying to make us fight amongst ourselves so that we don't actually challenge the system and the corrupt. And uh, half true, that meme goes back to Occupy Wall Street, where you got a bunch of people saying the 99 percent and, you know, the big bank screwed us over. And there's a rich guy in his office on the phone. He says, introduce identity politics. Mm -hmm. yep. What I see is they tried to figure out a way. How do you make it so that it's no longer about the wealthy and the poor, but you make it so that the poor people fight each other? Identity politics. You get a bunch of people on the left to start attacking people based on their race. Of course, the right will defend themselves. Who wouldn't defend when they're being attacked? Namely, when they go after like white people and say white males and all that stuff. And this creates division. So it's funny to me when we then see leftists pushing the meme that they're making, making us fight amongst ourselves. When it's like, yeah, there's America, a constitutional republic that has values, norms, and, and a bill of rights. And then there's the weird culty Marxist mm. garbage you're introducing. You are the psyop. What they're doing is the manipulation. Yeah, they're the pawns in the game. They're, they're the useful idiots and they don't realize it. All the kids that were out there burning down their neighborhoods and burning down the Pep Boys and the Target, like they were doing it to themselves and not even realizing it. But you know, when you talk about the, the Uniparty as two as one Florida guy to another, it's one Florida, Florida man, man. To, Florida man to another. Florida man. Um, this place that we live in, this is pretty freaking functional. There is nothing going on here unless you guys can think of something that I don't know about that is not right in this state in terms of what a functional government well, hold on. can do. I yeah. was uh, I was driving <laughs> what do you to get got? dinner. What do you got? Uh -huh. A gator? A gator uh -huh. jumped out of a no, river? The, snapped the, the beanie? What there, there was like four inches of water in the street, which proves climate change. Absolutely. We're working on climate change. We're, we're very close to the water here, you know, so huh. it's a little more complex. We're going to make Ian eat uh, the bugs and then the climate change is going to be but over. You it's going to be fine. You were, you were sarcastically illustrating right. my point. We can't even <laughs> It was find, raining today. I'm right. Kidding. It rained a little today, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, people will be like, well, there's a lot of traffic in the Miami area now. Well, yes, we did get about 300,000 new people here and we're building incredibly fast. So I totally agree with you on the Uniparty thing and that the Republicans just blow and suck and all of those things. But in micro places in different states, and that's the beauty of federalism, it's working. Like this place is hyper functional, has brought in a million people. Everyone's flourishing. We have some issues. There's some issues around uh, insurance, right? Home insurance, because we have two massive, we had a category five hurricane, Ian, two day, a year ago, two days. And we had another one, Idalia, not too long ago. So there's some, there's some like human issues. But in terms of the functioning of the state and law and order, and the, the uh, you loot, we shoot thing, you know that Hurricane Ian d demolished Southwest Florida last year. Demolished it. There were n there was no looting, zero looting. That literally would not have happened. Well, in the, there, the there was state. a little uh, skirmish outside of the Miami Heat um, <laughs> uh, stadium, <laughs> yes. but then cops came in right away, and then they booked but, people for blocking traffic immediately. Again, and then it was over right my away. Point. There exactly. was a skirmish. Or right, I exactly. love it when people and I saw a lot of MAGA people doing this because they're always going after Florida right now. Uh, when when it's Miami, you know, it's spring break and in Miami Beach, they get thousands of people from other places and they get real drunk at night yep. and they brawl in the streets. And it happened for like two nights. And I saw all these people going after DeSantis. First off, the governor is not in charge of what happens on every street in every city every moment. Uh, but I tweeted something like, you guys do know that if this lasts another day, uh, Fort Lauderdale, by the way, a Miami Beach Democrat mayor, some of the few Democrat mayors in the entire state, you know he's going to get involved. And then two days later, the National Guard was there. Like, that's what I'm saying. This place, while the while the D.C. version of the Uniparty 
is deeply corrupt and backwards, some places are doing it right. And it's not just Florida. I think yeah. this is the best example of it. Right? I'm a little biased, but I do believe Florida is the Alamo. It is the, the last free kind of standing place in America that's standing up for a lot of individual liberties, a lot of rights, a lot of, uh, you know, just, just the basic principle of you being able to keep your money. That's a very important principle that a lot of people don't have in California and in New York. And that's why I think I, I kind of want to go against your point, Tim, a little bit. I do think a governor is more powerful than a senator on a local level because I do believe... I'd say he wasn't more powerful. Uh, I'm saying when, we were, when, saying, when saying, you were talking about Gates, you were saying, Gates, I don't think he well, wants he was, to be a Gates governor. I think he wants to be a senator. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 can, you can have a lot of power in Florida or you can have a little bitty power in D.C., mm, but yeah. D.C. is the whole country. I would argue a governor is way more important than a senator, mainly because of just how much involved they are in everyday life, just how much they can make a difference when it comes to carrying firearms, just how much they can make a difference when it comes to tax policy. And uh, I, I truly do believe uh, Matt Gates, I think, would be a better governor than a senator. And I would hope he becomes the next governor but of Florida. Personally. What I'm saying is when you're a senator or a member of Congress, you can actually have an impact on immigration and war. When you're a governor, you can't kick, you can't deport people. You don't have the authority and you can only voice your strong your, well, your we opinion. Did, we did send a whole bunch of people to Martha's Vineyard, which keeps them in the country. Yeah. So I, I do appreciate the move because yeah. it's, it's a sanctuary a, city. A they say they right. But the, the issue is, while it does create, I suppose, uh, notice of the issue, creates awareness. Yeah, you all, can't all it's, solve the macro issue. All it's doing, though, yeah. is bringing the people in and then sending them deeper into the country. But you know what yeah, a governor yeah. does do very, is very important, is how they handle natural disasters. I was going to ask you, you guys talked about the hurricane a little bit. And, and the you loot, we shoot message right off the bat curbed it. So, like, I think a lot of our political instability might come from natural disasters. We might think, oh, it's about people and money. But, like, if there's a global flood... We're going to get tens of billions of, or millions of people are going to flood the United, you know, we've already seen it on the southern border. So I think yeah, but they're the flooding strong. Look, it, it, listen, listen, you, you, yes, if there are disasters and things like that in other parts of the world. But the issue is if literally nothing happens anywhere else in the world right, and we right, keep making right. the country better, they will keep saying, right. I want your stuff. Uh, yeah, but I, anyway, but, but the real point is natural disasters. I think it's a very important how we handle those things. And you could even call COVID a natural disaster. Even if it was built by humans, it, that reacted as if it was a natural plague. Look, you know how well DeSantis handled the hurricanes because they couldn't get him on anything. Like the media is waiting for the guy to literally just step in the wrong puddle or, or anything else. And Idalia, there was not, I, I did not see one article that he failed on anything. You know, in during Hurricane Ian, the Sanibel Causeway, it's a three mile bridge that they built from Fort Myers to the islands over there. It was blown apart in five different spots. It would have taken the federal government or any other state government literally five to 10 years to rebuild. They had cars going over that thing in three weeks. I went over it and you could not even tell the sections that were new versus the sections that were old because he basically walked, went there and said, hey, we're gonna get the best engineers here. We're cutting all the red tape, build this freaking thing, and they yeah. do it. And that's, so we don't, sometimes I think the thing that DeSantis suffers from actually is that we don't know what to do with a competent governor or a competent, a competent politician. We just we just don't know what to do. It's like, whoa, we're doing everything right? Hot damn. Let, let's talk about this. Uh, we have a story about Donald Trump from Politico. The crime is against me. Trump slams business fraud trial. Apparently before the trial, he said that the judge was a rogue and the prosecutor was racist. I don't know what he meant by that. Is it because she's black and he's white or something? But either way, what we're seeing from this trial is absolutely bonkers. It's now advancing. I guess, Ian, you were saying something that they've dropped some of the claims that's against what, Trump. That's what Trump said at a press conference right after he walked out of the courtroom. He and his lawyers start talking, said that because of the statute of limitations, uh, they dropped or they, they're no longer pursuing like 80 percent of the case. And I think that's a rough estimate. I, I think Trump. he made those comments inside of a Wendy's when he was screaming. Was he, was he, yeah, yeah, I think no. he went to Wendy's right after the, the court proceedings and did another uh, PR where he was talking about how Wait, the that, AG that was awesome. racist. Yeah, is that like Giuliani going to the Four Seasons, but it was the Four Seasons that was like uh, like a garage or something? No, no, no. no. He, he usually does these. Actual he, he, Trump usually, so, he, and he's really good at this. He does these kind of PR stunts right after a lot of these court proceedings where he yeah. goes in public places and public restaurants and, and buys everyone food. Right. And um, he, he buys Goodwill and, now, and essentially I, has I, that. But that let's, let's, a lot, not, a lot talk of about times this. he walks on that bill, by the way. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.